makes it unaffordable for lots of people in our borough. So there is a reason why affordable housing is often concentrated in the east of Jordan, and it's not because we uh, want to deny them a garden. I think that's a, a, a very narrow-minded point of view. Now, Mr Mayor, there's been a lot of people recently in national politics who've expressed independent views. We've got our own independent group here tonight who aren't actually the independent group, as I asked them before, but a different independent group to our national independent group. So, just to keep everything on track. Please wind up. Well, Mr Mayor, thank you Mr Mayor. And I think when you do have an independent view from your party, it's important that you do stand up and you do put your views forward and you stand up for what you believe in. Yes. Now, Councillor Norby suggested that that might revoke one of his rights later on. But some of you might not get that far. Some of you might not make it to the other side of May to choosing your leader if you do, right. do not listen to what people in the public yeah. are saying to yeah. you. Yeah. 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 And just finally to finish, uh, Councillor Adrian Jones said that in Newport there was a development, Celtic Manor, and it was a bit of scrubland and go back and ask the people of Newport about what they think about the development now. And I'd just like to say, Hoy Lake is not a bit of scrubland, yeah. and we will do everything to defend it. And we do not want this golf resort in Hoy Lake. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, one of the benefits of speaking last is that you can respond to those comments that are worthy of comment and ignore those that aren't. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to begin on a serious note. Um, while the issue of the Green Belt at Hoyle is clearly the reason for the tonight's meeting, I would also like to pay tribute to Councillor Chris Meaden uh, for the speech that she made uh, earlier at the beginning of the meeting. Chris's politics are very, very different to mine. Uh, she's been a socialist longer than I've been a conservative, uh, and she's been a, a councillor in Rock Ferry longer than I've been a councillor anywhere else. Uh, but I have to say, Mr Mayor, I was very proud to be able to stand up and applaud Councillor Meaden for her comments. And I have to say that I was utterly disappointed that not one single Labour member yeah, had the yeah. guts or the decency yeah, to yeah. stand up and applaud. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. doing whatever dirty job she's been offered and doing it without complaint and for not one of them to have the decency to stand up and applaud her when she made the most difficult political speech of her life reflects more on the Labour group today. Yes. 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 It is telling from tonight's meeting because the question tonight Mr Mayor is what has the Labour group in this council become? Mr Mayor, who had promised when we adopted the model of a cabinet that it would be a cabinet with a strong leader. A strong leader, so strong, he can't even get up and applaud a former councillor because somebody's told him not to. That's not strength, that's weakness. And it's pathetic. Mr Mayor, Councillor Sullivan, it referred to one of his colleagues in Pensby. I don't live in Pensby. I've not done some doors in Pensby. I have to concur with what he said. But if he thinks his board colleague in Pensby is bad, he should have canvassed in Morton Ward in 1991 and heard what the people there said about Councillor Yvonne Nolan. It pales into insignificance to what they're saying about Councillor Cannon. And that's why they got rid of her. And I'm very proud that my first campaign ever in this council chamber was to remove that woman from Morton. And we did it successfully. So if we can do it in Morton, you can do it in Rock Ferry. Mr Mayor, those of us who thank as well, thank you to those who contacted the Conservative group with their views on the Green Belt and on, this, on the issue of the golf resort in Hoylake. Mr Mayor, it's clear from what the, council, the leader of the council said that he's going to absorb himself from this decision and pass it back to the Planning Committee. Yes. He wants the Planning Committee to decide because he knows the Planning Committee has had its hands tied by law and we should only reject applications based on planning law. He has the political power to kill this application off before it gets to the Planning Committee. What he wants to do, Mr Mayor, is to uh, vote for this scheme in Cabinet, hand it over to the Planning Committee and then blame the Planning Committee for the application going through instead of taking responsibility. Yet again, weak, weak, weak. Then, Mr Mayor, we look at their record on the Green Belt. Well, anybody driving down Sorgal Massey Road, you can see their record on the Green Belt. You can't miss it. There's JCBs everywhere building, building on the Green Belt in Sorgal Massey. Yeah, the Labour Party supported it. 
I'm there, Mr. Mayor. I'm there, Mr. Mayor. And we have to say, Mr. Mayor, if you think it was Silver Lassie, then it becomes Hoylet. And once Hoylet's gone through, then it's Brackenwood, and then it's too late. So you're supposed to kick it down the road to July. In the meantime, you think nothing's going to happen. I tell you what will be happening. His consultants will be working on this night and day, paying £13,000 a month. Hopefully this time on a registered company and not <laughs> not <laughs> not that fraudulently. But Mr. Mayor, what I think we should learn from this lesson, not, not only is what Councillor Davis said and doesn't say, but is the cabinet the cabinet, as we know, decides. It says that in our recommendation. Councillor Norbury and Councillor Bird are the first councillors in history to come to this council chamber and vote for something because they're against <coughs> something. Yeah. What kind of common sense is that? Exactly. And then, Mr. Mayor, we're looking at the cabinet. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have to listen to your thoughts now, Mr. Mayor. All of this being rubbish, I have to say. But Mr. Mayor, the cabinet, or what's left of it, the cabinet, this clocked out cabinet whose best days are before it are going to put a millstone around the necks of the Labour group at the next local elections because of a scheme they haven't got the guts to, dis to, to cancel now. The Conservative group, the public, everybody wants this scheme cancelled except the cabinet. You vote with them, you're stuck with them. It's no good coming back in July saying exactly. we're against it now. It's too late. You've allowed it to go forward, and we know in this council that when it gets to a planning application, it it's almost it. always too late. That's to it, Council Lewis. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. 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 Th
we twi I twigged onto the idea, and so did some of my colleagues, I don't know, I'll say, I'll say, and we decided that it wasn't such a good idea that you know, I don't know if you've been to this council chip you know, Phil, a few couple of years later. And to your amazement, I said I'm now deciding not to support the golf course. And he said some very really rude things, I'm going to tell you about it. And we realised there was nothing like it was supposed to be. And we should have killed it off right away. But we still, instead, at your point of build, you went ahead with all sorts of proposals, spending millions of pounds to get consultants report. They loved it, by the way, the consultants. And they still love it. Um, so we realised that there were so many things wrong that we couldn't support it. I was hoping tonight that we would be having a uh, non-political debate on this. But good old Councillor Norbury comes in with a left-wing and militant uh, all this rubbish about attacking the Tories or us. Totally nothing to do with uh, this as far as I'm concerned. I understand that Castle Norbury is a possibility to be the leader of the castle when you've got a vote. Well, Phil, you are not perfect in your job, but I'd much prefer to have you. So, I want to just say a quick word to Mr. Burns. I'm sorry about that green light being on, but can I just say there are 56 of us here and 10 of you over there. We, unfortunately, for the way it's worked out, we can't change things, but you can. And you must have tonight realised that there's no point in going on any further with. There's no point. Uh, all the things that have come out, we're not, we not going to waste the time waiting for these further reports, because it's going to say the same thing. I personally know that they're not, but I'm sure that the will sort will never be built. But I don't want you to waste any more money on this bill. That's the issue. Of course you are. You're spending all this money on all these consultants. You're, you're offering, you get, um, you're offering this, what, 17 million pounds? Um, Time counts for us. Oh, just a quick one, Mr. You're offering up, you're offending to spend all these millions of pounds, and there's so many other things that you can do with the money. A lot of you members have told you tonight about all the important things you can do in building affordable housing, and lots of other things. So please don't bother now spending any more money on consultants. They've had a lovely run. They've had their money. They don't care about it. Cut the whole thing down now. Close down the ideas, and let's. Get rid of the Joe Anderson. 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 Mr. Mayor, it seems to be expected that uh, members of one political party uh, denigrate those from uh, other parties. Uh, though I have to say, in the case of Labour, they seem to spend most of the time denigrating each other. Uh, now, I'm not going to do that. Um, Councillor Phil Davis is a reasonable man. He's a hard-working politician. In my personal dealings with Phil, he's never been anything but civil and courteous and cooperative. But, and this is not meant as an insult, Phil, he does remind me of Theresa May. <laughs> most people, <laughs> most people, Mr. Mayor, who bothers about the facts now realise that Brexit is a national embarrassment and is doomed to end disastrously. But Mrs. May plows on blindly, refusing to contemplate any change in her policy in her single-minded determination to fulfil some mythical will of the people on a June day nearly three years ago. Golf resort. Now, Phil Davis embarked on his vision of bringing a Jack Nicklaus golf centre to Hoyling some years ago. Though, in fact, it never had anything more to do with Jack Nicklaus than borrowing his name. Exactly. Opposition to this scheme has grown steadily. I commend the Ho Stop the Holy Golf Resort campaign for their painstaking work in exposing the flaws and follies 
in turning over a swathe of our green belt plan to this development. <coughs> Underwritten by council borrowing, and despite the optimistic claims about a bonus of, of benefits to local businesses from tourism, unlikely to do more than line the pockets of the developers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I would offer Phil Davis a little advice, um, although I am uh, a new councillor and he's been here a long time. <coughs> As we all know, my party suffered huge damage over the issue of tuition fees when half our MPs failed to keep a pledge and ended up supporting the Conservative plan to triple them. Phil Davis has gone on record as saying the green belt is the jewel in the world's crown and greatly valued by our residents. And Councillor Phil Brightmore asserted that building on the green belt is an act of civic vandalism. Well, as my party discovered all too painfully, Saying one thing and then doing another does not go down well with the public. <coughs> oh, yeah. And at least Liberal Democrats had the excuse that they were the junior partners in a coalition. Uh, the world's Labour Party has no such excuse. The world golf folly is their plan. It's theirs alone. No other party is forcing them to continue with it. And the public certainly aren't. Like all councillors, my inbox has been inundated with messages from people horrified at the prospect of losing Green Belt. These plans have created plenty of publicity, but where have been all the messages from residents <coughs> clamouring for yet another golf course? Well, of course, there have been none, because apart from the developers, no one wants it. And as Councillor Phil Gilchrist rightly argued, we have a major issue in seeing through the much delayed local plan process, which is testing the capacity of our council officers to the limit. It is ridiculous to divert some of that essential work to service this <coughs> speculative venture. The Labour amendment waffles about the need for full facts, years after this fantasy project began. And we're told that today, just before we happen to meet, some businesses have come up with some, some um, arguments in favour of it. Very convenient to the last minute. Yeah. And they don't want to see details of various feasibility studies. And they call for another meeting of the relevant scrutiny committee. Councillor, I hate to curtail the and speech, but you're getting way over time. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, we have all the facts we need. We know what our residents want. Our green belt is too precious to sacrifice for 160 luxury houses and a 17 million pound re relief road. Let's focus, as Phil Davis said he was going to do, on getting our basic services right instead of indulging in these fantasy, grandiose projects which we know are doomed to fail. Yeah. Congratulating Councillor Brain on his main speech. Um, to start off with, I'd like to say that decision making is certainly something that as local councillors we can't avoid and it's something that we do on a regular basis. Some decisions are easy and can be made quickly and some are more difficult and take longer for us to arrive at a decision. And to make a good decision we have to do numerous things and take a series of steps. So firstly, it involves gathering a whole host of sometimes complex and detailed pieces of information and evidence. We talk to different people, we listen to what different people, experts and groups have to say, we read different material and information from a range of sources. We then analyse those pieces of information and evidence. We work out what is fact, what is fiction, what is conjecture, what is myth, and what is reality. We then weigh up the pros and cons. There are times we may have to do some more thinking and sometimes go back and get some more clarification. And then finally, we actually make our decision. In relation to Celtic Manor, we are not yet at the stage where we have all the pieces of information and evidence. Various studies are required and there needs to be appropriate consultation. 
We've certainly heard the concerns from some rural residents loud and clear. We've heard their concerns about the environment, the partners in the scheme, uh, the potential investment that the council may make and the impact on where they live. But we are also mindful and aware of the projected transformational benefits of the developments. There would be local employment for the construction and landscaping. The direct employment within the Celtic Manor Resort itself, the benefits to the local supply chain, the vital income from council tax and business rates that our council so desperately needs in the face of continuing Tory austerity, and also the boost to our local businesses and our visitor economy here on Wirral. And I've got a list of some of the businesses that are supporting uh, the Celtic Manor development. So Paul Askew, uh, the Wirral Born Chef and Chair of the Wirral Visitor Economy Board, uh, the Hoylake based family run firm JD Engineering, Hoylake based UTS Gym, and Wirral based BT Local Business. Cool, well done. What about EE? E? What about the rest of them? EE e. e. and um, Joe the Anderson. <laughs> Quiet, please, I want to hear the councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In 2015, all councillors in this chamber unanimously signed up to the World 2020 Plan. There are pledges within it about job opportunities for all, a vibrant tourism economy, and increasing inward investment to the borough. To hold our Celtic Manor Resort journey now would send out totally the wrong message to our residents, businesses, and other investors. We've heard the concerns in relation to the local environment and the green belt, and we've heard about the benefits in relation to local regeneration, local employment, local businesses, and world's visitor economy. To make an informed decision, we need all the facts, and we are not yet in a position to make this informed decision. There's a whole range of evidence that is still being gathered, and assessments being prepared and worked upon. It would be totally premature and wholly irresponsible to make a decision in relation to Celtic Manor as things stand today. So we are asking the appropriate scrutiny committee to do a detailed piece of scrutiny work where they will be able to call a range of different witnesses. This will then enable scrutiny committee to make informed representations to cabinet. And it's so important this piece of scrutiny work is undertaken and completed. I ask all members of the council to support the Labour Group motion this evening. So now we come to the rights of reply, starting with Councillor Chris Blakely as the person of first motion, you have a right to reply. You may, it says here, address the council up to five minutes, but I'd ask you to take into account you've had a pretty big fight already. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, what, what, what can I say? I mean, my group leader is behind me, said it before. What has happened to democracy? within the will Labour group. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. happened to it? You know, we hear tonight the people in the will Labour group are opposed to this, yet they're going to vote for this because they'll either be suspended or, or expelled or whatever. So when it comes to having to control your group with such threats, with such threats, then it is atrocious. And as chief of this group, I can give an assurance to this group and to you, Phil, that I will never, I would never stoop to levels that you have stooped to to whip your group into line. It's outrageous. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Let's get through this. You have your chance later. Just a, a quick comment to Councillor Burke, who mentioned me. Thanks for having me as the pantomime director, I don't know where that came from. The, the, the requisition notice was signed by 21 members, I don't know why I've been singled out, but there you go. I'm with you, Councillor Bear. I think we should be doing more to help homeless. I, I made you aware of the scrutiny committee not long ago that this council had £121,000 in the homeless kitty that it had not spent for 18 months. And yet we find out there's 749 homeless people across Will summer service opening and 16 sleeping rough. Would you rather money was spent 
on the holiday golf resorts, or would you rather be spent on helping those homeless people? I know where I would rather see it spent. <laughs> uh, and Councillor Caddy, you mentioned the scrutiny committee. Shane Fraser did mention it. The last scrutiny committee, you moved a recommendation, and he couldn't even find a second that I'm sure. How Shane Fraser, you know, unbelievable. So, that tells us all we need to know about the scrutiny committee. <coughs> You know, Mr. Mayor, Mr. I've had that four minutes, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mayor, the local campaign forum put out a press release this afternoon. Can't find it, so here it is. And I agree. It parts with paragraph four, five says that conservative motion presented this evening will not stop the current proposal. Can't argue. We can't stop the current proposal. We as a group can't stop it, but we as a group of councillors can. And, that, yes. and that's what I'd say. And, and closing, Mr Mayor, I'd just say to, to the Leader of the Council, you've been a councillor for over, what, 20 years? Leader for the last 10 or so? Seven? Okay. No doubt in that time, no time in that time you increased a great deal of your constituents and a wider world area. But do you really want your legacy to be the council leader that saw the people of Willow down the river? Because that's what it will be for. Exactly. Finally, finally, Mr Mayor, delaying this decision making until July will not make this go away. No. It will only make it even easier for the Cabinet member to manufacture figures and facts that can be questioned, but you know, we don't have the power to overthrow those decisions. So I make a plea, a final plea to the members on that side. Think of our future, think of our children's future, think of the generations that come after us. Don't worry about being suspended, do the bigger thing, stand up, speak your mind, be a councillor who represents your people, not the yeah. I think, well, I know Councillor Blakely has just accused our cabinet member of manufacturing facts and figures, effectively calling her a liar. Now he should withdraw that straight away. I was So we move on to Councillor Phil Gilchrist's proposal of the Liberal Democrat motion. You now have your right of reply, maybe as the council for up to five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I'd like to thank all those members of the public who have taken time over the last six months or so to put their case and worries about this resort so carefully, thoroughly, well researched. I will reply to those emails in due course, but at this stage, thank everyone who has tried to influence opinion here tonight. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, yes. Councillor Agent Jones told us about Newport. How many NATO conferences do we have flocking to Britain? How many conferences can the economy support? Scrutiny committees. Did the scrutiny committee that looked at car parking charges in the country parks actually influence the cabinet's decision? No. Did the scrutiny committee that heard a very gentle report and generous report from one of our officers actually discourage the cabinet from buying Wilco and the bingo hall? No. no. Has scrutiny been called in to look at the view cinema, the prospect that it might be demolished in a few years' time? Has a scrutiny committee looked at the economics of borrowing, borrowing money to have it and the costs of it disappearing in just a few years? No. no. Has scrutiny that looked at the budget the budget papers where Councillor Sykes and others questioned the Brackenwood Golf Course as to whether it should be included with the other two courses <coughs> to make a viable bid for an operator. Did scrutiny affect that decision? We don't know because the Cabinet Minute just says they note the issues that have been raised. We looked at past committee reports, 
who said that in December 17, the planning application for this project would be in by June this year. It has missed that deadline. If scrutiny is called to look at this matter, and scrutiny can look at it any time it wants without this cabinet resolution, when the scrutiny members get there, how many will be told?